All right. Well, and, and thank you for the kind introduction, Phil, uh, and for the work that you do every day to support recovery. I'd like to thank also Twin Cities Recovery Project and the University of Minnesota School of Medicine's Medical Discovery Team on Addiction for hosting today's event. Uh, I'm honored to be spending a few minutes with you this morning. Uh, Director Gupta asked me to thank you for the important work you do and to extend his regrets for being unable to join you today. Looking at the speaker lineup, I'm humbled to be included. While I don't know all the presenters, I can say I've long looked up to leaders such as Dr. Clark, Reverend Jan Brown, Mark Sanders, who I understand will be following me, and Dora Wright. I'm also honored to be on the same virtual stage as Dr. Jerome Adams, with whom I had the opportunity to cross paths a few times when he served as our nation's Surgeon General. And as Phil mentioned, and I cannot forget, Twin Cities Recovery Project founder, Mark Jonikin, whom we lost suddenly and unexpectedly last year, and without whom we might not be meeting today. The CDC's latest provisional data indicate there were an estimated 107,622 overdose deaths in 2021. That's unprecedented and more than double the number of overdose deaths in 2015. The growing presence of synthetic opioids in the drug supply and the disruptions caused by the COVID-19 pandemic appear to be key drivers of this acceleration. It is this continued acceleration in the opioid epidemic's death toll that has led the Biden-Harris administration to make saving lives the North Star of its efforts to respond to drug use. As the opioid epidemic has evolved, I'm sure you know its impacts have shifted. In 2020, the overdose mortality rate among US Blacks overtook that of whites for the first time since 1999. And from 2019 to 2020 alone, Blacks experienced a nearly 50% increase in the rate of overdose death, higher than that of any other group and nearly double the rate of increase among whites. That year, only American Indians and Alaska Natives had a higher overdose death rate than Black Americans. We must try to respond effectively to the epidemic in all of America's diverse communities. In April 2021, ONTP released a list of seven first-year drug policy priorities. These were expanding access to evidence-based treatment, particularly medication for opioid use disorder, advancing racial equity in our approach to drug policy, enhancing evidence-based harm reduction efforts, supporting evidence-based prevention efforts to reduce youth substance use, reducing the supply of illicit substances, advancing recovery-ready workplaces and expanding the addiction workforce, and expanding access to recovery support services. These priorities served as the starting point for the development of the administration's inaugural National Drug Control Strategy which was released just under a month ago. In developing the strategy, the administration systematically reached out to stakeholders across the spectrum, including BIPOC communities, people who use drugs and people in recovery. Advancing racial equity is a cross-cutting priority in the new strategy. It's woven throughout and supported by a call to review and update data collection, analysis, and reporting strategies. So we have the data we need to better understand where and how in inequities emerge and what steps can be taken to address them. The strategy also breaks new ground by explicitly recognizing harm reduction as a pillar of our national approach to drug use, laying plans for expanding access to harm reduction and better integrating these crucial services with treatment, including by offering low threshold buprenorphine in conjunction with harm reduction services. The strategy also calls for using data to ensure access to naloxone when and where it is needed nationally. Through the strategy, the administration also maps out plans for expanding access to evidence-based treatment, including medications for opioid use disorder. In another first, the strategy includes a chapter devoted to supporting recovery. It sets forth actions to expand the peer recovery support services workforce and the organizational infrastructure that supports it. And it lays plans for developing a recovery research agenda, addressing stigma, increasing employment opportunities for people in recovery, 
and promoting the adoption of recovery ready workplace policies. As we move forward with the development of future strategies, we will continue to reach out to diverse stakeholder communities for input. I encourage you to follow up with us to see how your voice can contribute to the development of future strategies. And thank you again for allowing me to join you together. Have a wonderful conference and do great things. Thank you. <laughs>